So two of the texts that we read for this unit were both by the same author, Susan Glassville, uh, Trifles and the Jury of Her Peers. I'm sure you noticed that both of these treat the same narrative, but they do so using different genres, Trifles being a drama and Jury of Her Peers being fiction. So that gives us a really good uh, opportunity to really directly examine some of the difference in, in genre in the formal features between these two forms, drama and fiction. Uh, Trifles was, was written first in uh, 1916 and Jury of Her Peers was written in 1917. So if we start by taking a look at Trifles, you'll see that it starts setting the scene with some stage directions that describe that scene and then moves into the dialogue and that they're already at the Wright's farm at the beginning of this play. Uh, in the fiction text, though, there's an additional opening scene where uh, they're at the Hales farm and they are picking up the Hales and they, then they drive to the Wrights farm. And that, that extra scene gives an opportunity to um, describe that different setting as a contrast and, and gets you into the mind of Martha Hale and establishes her as one of the focal characters, the characters who's going to receive focus in this text. So that addition of that opening scene introduces some important elements of the narrative. The other thing that you may have noticed is that in the fiction version, there's a lot more discussion by that guiding narrative voice, explaining what Mrs. Hale in particular is thinking and giving some of her judgments about things. For example, you know, as her husband is speaking and relating what he saw as a witness um, and what happened, she thinks at one at one point, now there he was saying things that he didn't need to say. Mrs. Hale tried to catch her husband's eye, but fortunately the county attorney interrupted. Um, so that, that sort of judgment and that idea that her husband is saying too much isn't really present in the drama. Now, it could be accomplished through the way the characters behave on stage, right? Um, the Mrs. Hale character could shoot a look towards uh, the Hale character. And so that meaning could be accomplished in uh, a dramatic representation of this play. But just in reading it, we don't get the same sense of, of what's going on there. That presence of a guiding narrative voice that's apart from all of the characters in the text in the fiction piece is one of the really major formal differences uh, that you probably noticed and, and may have focused on in your reading between these two texts. And we'll say a lot more about that as we get into the point of view part of this unit. Another way of thinking about how you might compare these two is to look at those points of similarity. There are definitely um, a lot of moments of dialogue that are present both in the drama and in the fiction text. So that would be another part to look at between these two stories. Look at those places where the dialogue is the same and then see how those representations may differ form-wise. So for example, in the drama, you might end up with um, stage directions that help explain that are different from the way that moment is narrated in the fiction text. So let's take a look at that moment. It's present in both the play and the fiction text where Mrs. Peters, you know, they find the bird, they find the dead bird, and Mrs. Peters says, somebody wrung its neck. And that, that line of dialogue is present in both. In the play, um, the, the mode of delivery of that line is indicated by some extra punctuation, these hyphens, these um, called EM dashes that are between each word. So it adds space, somebody rung its neck. In the fiction text, those are, those are absent, but there's this explanation. Uh, somebody rung its neck, said she, in a voice that was slow and deep. And then there's some significant stage directions after that line in the play. Their eyes met, a look of growing comprehension of horror. Steps are heard outside. Mrs. Hale slips the box under the quilt pieces and sinks into her chair. Enter sheriff and county attorney, Mrs. Peters rises. Whereas you get this paragraph in the fiction text. And then again, the eyes of the two women met, this time clung together in a look of dawning comprehension of growing horror. Mrs. Peters looked from the dead bird to the broken door of the cage. Again, their eyes met. Just then, there was a sound outside the door. Mrs. Hale slipped the box under the quilt pieces in the basket and sank into the chair before it. Mrs. Peters stood holding to the table. The county attorney and the sheriff came in from outside. So what happens is the same, right? I mean, it's, it's describing the same thing, but obviously there's a lot more detail um, in the fiction because you, you only have your mind's eye 
to help you um, represent that scene. In the drama, obviously, ideally, you'd be watching that acted on stage, and so you'd see these characters doing these things. Um, but even so, you get much more sense of what the realization is by the, the words and the mode of description that's given in that fiction text, just because there's more, more room and ability to, to do that. And the point of a text like that, because it's meant to be read, is to make that vivid. So thinking through those differences, as well as looking at moments of similarity, can really help us to understand the differences between these two forms, fiction uh, and drama.